The cool, clear, clean water that comes out of your tap looks a lot different than the water in the river that it came from. We'll show you how a gallon of water in the Yadkin River becomes a gallon of clean water ready to come out of your tap on this edition of City Saturday. Most of us who live in Winston-Salem take our water for granted, but behind the simple act of turning on the tap lies a complex process that includes thousands of miles of pipes, millions of dollars of equipment, constant monitoring, and a few tricks of the trade that allow our water system to crank out almost 40 million gallons of water a day. At the Swan Water Treatment Plant, the process starts at this water intake on the Yadkin. 63 feet below this floor are four giant pumps, two that can pull 25 million gallons out of the river every day, and two that can pump 12 and a half million gallons. All you can see of them from here are these motors, 18 feet high, that run the pumps. The raw water is sent through two massive underground pipes, three feet wide and over a mile long, to these two raw water reservoirs. Between them, they can hold 150 million gallons, enough to keep the plant running for six days. In a minute, you'll see why that's important. The Swan plant can treat up to 25 million gallons a day from the raw water reservoirs. The water is sent to these two treatment basins. A coagulant called alum is added to make dirt and other foreign particles in the water stick together. The water is then slowly mixed in a process called flocculation. Clumps called flock are formed as these particles stick together and get larger. The mixed water then flows through a sedimentation basin where the flock settles to the bottom. The water is then filtered to remove any remaining impurities. Next. Fluoride is added to protect teeth, and zinc orthophosphate is added to prevent pipe corrosion. Chlorine is also added before and after filtration to kill disease-causing bacteria. The finished water is sent to two covered reservoirs, each of which hold five million gallons. They hold the water until it is pumped out to the distribution center, where it eventually reaches your tap through a network of pipes that would stretch from here to Los Angeles if placed end to end. The plant is designed so that the water flows through every step of the process by gravity. This makes it cheaper to run the plant. However, operators can intervene at any point if they have to. Operators can also control when the intake pumps pull water out of the river. Remember that six-day supply in the raw water reservoirs? It gives operators flexibility in deciding when to pump water out of the river. If the river is especially muddy from runoff after a storm, operators can wait a couple of days for the river to clear. More importantly, it allows the plant to keep operating if the river is contaminated upstream. This is just one of the tricks of the trade that operators use to increase the efficiency of the plant. Plant operators also have learned how to deal with algae in the water. Runoff from farms brings traces of fertilizer into the river, and that fertilizer promotes the growth of algae in the raw water reservoirs. To discourage this, operators mix a little alum in the raw water. The alum binds to the fertilizer particles, and in the larger raw water reservoir, an aeration system keeps the water moving to keep the algae away from the surface and out of the sunlight it needs to grow. In addition to keeping the plant operating efficiently, the utilities division must meet strict state and federal guidelines for water quality. Every day, water plant operators collect and test 258 water quality samples to monitor every step of the process from the raw water that enters the plant until the finished water is ready to enter the distribution system. A separate network of pipes within the plant enables operators to collect in this lab all the samples they need.
Every two hours around the clock, seven days a week and 365 days a year, operators compare these samples with the instruments that monitor the process. This ensures that the instruments are operating properly and helps plant operators optimize the treatment process. Plant chemists test the water for minerals, metals, and organic compounds according to a schedule established by state and federal authorities. Some tests are conducted daily, some weekly, some monthly, some quarterly, and some annually. These tests ensure that the water is safe to drink. Chemists also collect and analyze 180 water samples every month from various points in the distribution system to make sure that nothing harmful is getting into the water after it leaves the plant. Water plant operators also control the flow of water in the distribution system. A pumping station at the Swan Water Plant sends water to a controlling tank, which in turn feeds other pump stations and tanks in the distribution system. Sensors in the tanks remotely control the pump stations. However, water plant operators constantly monitor the tank levels to look for indications of something out of the ordinary. For example, if a tank level is dropping rapidly, it may indicate that a water main has ruptured. Water tanks are strategically located to allow water to flow by gravity into homes and businesses. When you turn on your faucet, the weight of the water in the tank actually pushes the water out of the tap. The Utilities Division has three water plants and they all follow the same steps in producing our drinking water. Now that you know exactly how the process works, you can rest assured that the water that comes out of your tap is safe to drink. And that's City Saturday.